The next thing to do would be you have your class set up and you've invited all your students and all your students have accepted. The next thing you would want to do is to put, say, a brief up. So I've logged back in as my work account, so hsheridan at cdcfe.com. And these are all of my classes from last year. Um, I've made this one up just now off screen called Fake Class for Tutorials just to show you guys how it works. So I'll just click into it and you can see here's my fake class and the students is I've invited tutorials, which is also me, um, to join it. So let me go back to look at all my classes and the way I, so I explained to you about stream, the area for briefs, students, the area that lists all your students and about, which is usually the area for putting up handouts and things like that. Over on the left here, this little menu, if you click in here, this will bring you back to like, here's all of my classes. And this is my name in convention. This is, these are two third year classes in graphics, two second year, two first year in a photography class. Um, so I can go into any of these individually. Let me go in there. So that's, for example, that's my advanced typography class. Um, let me go into, if I just click in this first one here with the little house icon courses, that sort of lists them all. Let me click into one to show you, okay, let's go into advanced typography. This is my class from last year. So you can see here this stream section, the type of things that I would have put up. So I can put up things in the stream section, just an announcement. You know, for example, to print on thick paper. This was at the end of, no, this is February. They were all printing on thick paper. Just a little instru quick instructions. Um, book binding basics, you know. Um, these were little videos that I made. Other little announcements. Um, a brief. So I always name them properly. You know, I would always say put in brief zero. One, the first brief, second brief, the third brief. Um, just so as when the students are going through, they can see very quickly where the different briefs are. Um, let me go into another one. What would have... Okay, this one, graphic design and design skills. I keep those two together because they're closely interlinked. This was a list of all the projects for the end of the year. Um, Hogwarts stamp brief, a meeting that we had. Risk assessment they had to do. Doodle My Day project, uh, a portfolio review, a thing that they had to fill out for that, um, a brief. Okay, it wasn't very as organized as I thought. Usually I put the word brief at the start so that students can see it. Um, okay, but that'll give you an idea of the type of thing that you can do. If I click into students, so these are all the students that are in that class. Um, and then the about section, when it loads up, um, I would put things in the about section. So you can see these were little videos that I made up, how to lay out a stamp design, how to do a photo effect, um, other kind of tutorials, resources, um, online video tutorials, principles of design, a template that I want them to use, a handout, basics of graphic design. Oh, what I always do is, the very first thing I'll put up is the module descriptors. So this is the one for graphic design and graphic design skills. I also put this up, uh, which showed the graphic design course. Um, you know, QQI information, this is so they knew which which modules were core modules, um, how many credits they were. Whether the students ever look at this or not, I don't know, but they can't say it, that the, it wasn't offered to them. If they say, oh, well, I, I didn't know, I never saw a module descriptor. Well, you did because it was in your classroom. Um, so that's really handy. I usually do that right at the start. So let me show you how to do that. Let's go into fake class for tutorials. Okay. So in the, let's go into the about, we'll forget about stream. Okay, let's say you're starting at the very start of the year. I've got my student called tutorials and I've got loads more down here. Let's say, let's pretend. Let's go in, into the about section. So fake class for tutorials. Let's say this, what's the class description? Um, this is a great class where you will learn all of the Secrets of the Universe. Uh, where does the class meet? Room one, one, one whatever. 
Um, you could even you could put in here, let's say in this section, maybe if it, for say B Tech, there's three or four outcomes. You might want to list the top four outcomes, just the high level outcomes or something like that. Or maybe in the module descriptor, there might be a little. You know, there's usually a paragraph at the start that gives an overview of the module. You can literally copy and paste that straight in there. So the minute that they come in, they have an idea of what the class is all about. So let's add some class materials. Um, what will we add in here? Hmm. Let's say for argument's sake, I want to... Okay, well, here are some options. Um, there's a little kind of paper clip here where I can attach a file. So if you had a, a document on a PDF, let's say, on your hard drive, you can attach it there. I generally use Google Drive to store everything. And I think if you're using Google Classroom, you really need to start to get used to storing everything on Google Drive. Um, so you can click in here and link to a Google Drive document, a YouTube video, or a link of the internet. So I'll just skip past this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to link to something in Google Drive. Okay, let me go in and find something. Let's say, for argument's sake, um, okay, let's go into my drive and find something. Okay, class, you do. We'll get something from last year. Uh, what will we get? We will get um, handouts. Uh, first year handouts. Appreciation of art. Okay. So I had a uh, Harvard referencing. Let's say I'm doing Harvard referencing with them at some point in the year and I have this Harvard referencing handout. So I want to link that to them. Now, what you'll notice is, look at this icon here. Okay, it's like a blue rectangle with white lines. And then if you look at this one, it has a big W. Okay, um, the difference between this icon and this icon is this one here is a Google Documents document. Okay, Google Docs document. This is a Word document. Um, you're better off, there's no problem, I can attach this if I want, but it's it's better practice if you're using Google Classroom and Google Docs and you're using the whole Google suite of um, applications to use something like this, a Google Docs file. And I'll show you in a minute how you can convert a Word document into a document like this. So let's just attach this for now. Okay. Um, and then let's say for argument's sake with this I want there's a Harvard referencing example and let's go in here to YouTube <laughs> YouTube let's say let's find I'm gonna find a video Harvard referencing tutorial okay let's say for argument's sake I'm not even gonna bother looking at that but let's say it's really good. I can go up here, I can go edit, copy, I can go in here, I can go edit, paste in there, and search for it. Harvard referencing tutorial, let's put that in. Okay, um, Okay, free Harvard referencing generator. Okay, let's say for argument's sake, I want, so I've added something from Drive, which is something I, I've written. I've added a YouTube video. Let's say I want to add a link off the internet. So here's a little Harvard referencing generator. Again, I'm gonna go, I'm on a Mac, I'm hitting Command C, and here, Command V, and I'm gonna add that link. 